In this example, we're going to go ahead and find the arc length of a polar curve over a certain interval. So here we have a polar coordinate that is represented, a polar curve that is represented by r equals 8 e to the 2 theta. And they give us the interval, um, the closed interval, 0 to 2 pi. And then in the end, we can round to four decimal places. So here, notice that we are given the arc length of a curve in two ways. Um, and in our case, since it's polar coordinates represented by the function r, we'll use r. Notice that we already have r here. Um, we have our alpha, which is 0, and our beta, which is 2 pi. And so all we need is dr d theta. So let's go ahead and do that on the side here. So if r is equal to 8 e to the 2 theta, we know that dr d theta is equal to 8 times um, e to the 2 theta, right, itself times chain rule of the exponent times 2. So we get 16 e to the 2 theta. So now we know that we're going to go ahead and put r in for right here, and then now um, dr d theta right here. And notice we'll have some work ahead of us because we have to square it, square root it, all that stuff. But it seems like a pretty straightforward formula. So the length here is going to be equal to the definite integral from 0 to 2 pi because it was given right, right up here. All right, square root of, I'm just going to draw a line here, just like that. And then we get um, 8 e to the 2 theta squared plus dr d theta, which is 16 e to the 2 theta squared d theta. And now it just becomes a definite integral as we've seen before. So we get 0 to 2 pi, right, um, square root of, and then d theta at the end. Um, so we do know, we have to be careful with our exponent rules. We have 8 squared and then e to the 2 theta squared. So remember, a base to a power to a power, we will multiply these, and then we take 8 squared. So we just want to make sure that we take it to also the coefficient in addition to the function and exponent property part itself. Okay, so then we're going to get 64 e to the 4 theta plus 256 e to the 4 theta. And we can go ahead and combine these, but what I want to do is probably when I add these two up, it's probably going to be a little bit larger. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and just factor a common factor, and then we get what's left over, which will be 5. And that way we can go ahead and take things um reduce things out of the square root. So what I mean by factoring a GCF, I know they're like terms, I'm sure you saw that, but um, but what I want to do is I feel like if I add them, it won't be as obvious to see what the, perf the largest perfect square of that number would be. So I'm going to factor out a common factor of 64 e to the 4 theta, and you'll see it'll work out nicely, because if I take this out, I get a 1 here and then a plus. And then if I take out a uh, 64 from 256, that leaves me with 4, and, I, and that's out as well. So notice that I get 1 plus 4, and that's the part that's not a perfect square that it will be left inside the radical. So if I go ahead and do this, um, I'll get square root of 64 is 8, and the square root of e to the 4 theta, now if we want, we can put this over here as e to the 4 theta square root. We can rewrite it so maybe you can see it a little bit better where it'll be to the 1 half. So then you can see that the 2 and the 4 reduce out and you just get 2 theta there. So we're going to have here 8 um, definite integral 0 to 2 pi. Of, and then we're going to go ahead and take this out in front and have e to the 2 theta, 
And then inside the radical, the only thing that is left now is 1 plus 4, which is 5 d theta. Now we still have constant multiple rules, so let's go ahead and just take out that square root of 5. There's no theta in it, so it'll be 8 square root 5, definite integral 0 to 2 pi of e to the 2 theta d theta. And notice that this becomes a really nice, simple integration problem. So now what we're going to have is 1 half e to the 2 theta evaluated from 0 to 2 pi. And if you need to use u substitution there, go ahead and do that. Um, we're far along in our integration techniques. Um, so now we're going to have, if I reduce out that half and that 8, we get a 4 square root 5 times e to the 2 times 2 pi minus e to the 2 times 0. So we just went ahead and put those in right there using the fundamental theorem of calculus part 2. So we get 4 square root 5 times e to the 4 pi minus 1 because e to the 2 times 0 is e to the 0 which is 1. Now this is the exact answer. Um, of course, they, what they want us to do up here is find um, the result in four decimal places. So what we can do is go ahead and go to our decimals and just go ahead and put in four, the square root is right here, five, let me push an arrow out and get times parentheses e to the 4 pi, so 4, and then my pi symbol is right there. I have to move the cursor over so it gets on that base again, and then I'll have minus 1, and then close the parenthesis. So then I'll write this down. I get 2, 5, 6, 4, 7, 7, 2, point, 7, 7, and then rounding to four decimal places, I would have the 7 as my test digit, which will put that round up, and then it'll be 771. So if I go back to my page here, I can definitely see if I scroll up that I'm definitely on the right track because that's the correct answer.